Hi, it's Karina, and thank you so much for clicking on my video. Today, I wanna to talk about our skin. This is something that so many of us struggle with, and today I wanna to share with you some of the lessons that I have learned that I feel have really saved my skin. I'm gonna share my daily skincare routine and the products that I like using on my skin. If you have a specific skin issue, like oily skin, dry skin, breakouts, let me know what your skin issues are. It's really helpful so that I can address those specifically in my future videos. And if you have specific products that you are curious about, whether or not that is good for skin, or specific experiences you've had with certain products, that's also really helpful. We just have so much variation, different skin types, different skin products. So I think all of us being able to kind of pool our knowledge together is so helpful in helping each one of us determine exactly the right combination of products for our skin. So there are a few common factors that can contribute to our skin issues. And especially when we're thinking about wrinkles or unevenness of skin, and the first thing I want to talk about is tension. So we have a lot of musculature in our face. It allows us to express emotion, allows us to chew our food, allows us to squint our eyes so that we can see better. But when the muscles of the face start to kind of hold on to that tension, this can be a big factor that causes things like wrinkles. And if we can do something really simple to relieve some of that tension in the face, this I believe is one of the most important and really easiest things we can do to improve our skin. So that is simple facial massage. If you are fortunate enough to go and have a professional facial on a periodic basis, that's wonderful. But understand that a simple self facial massage once a day or even once a week can go a long way in starting to relieve some of that muscular tension of the face and just allowing the skin to have better blood flow and more evenness of skin tone and brightness. The second factor is congestion. So we can have congestion of our blood, congestion of our lymphatic fluid, and even sinus congestion can actually contribute to puffiness of the face and even those kind of under eye circles that so many of us struggle with. So thinking about sinus congestion is a great example because we can really imagine how much just that lack of movement and lack of the sinuses being able to do what they're supposed to do not only makes us feel really bad, but that congestion leads to so much toxicity kind of building up and it's unable to be released. So thinking of that sinus congestion as an example, we can see where something that encourages the release of that congestion would be super beneficial. And again, we're thinking about our blood vessels, we're thinking about all of those little lymphatic vessels, and that is also greatly benefited by this facial massage. So you can do this self facial massage with just your fingers. You don't need anything special or anything fancy. However, there are some special and fancy things out there that can assist us with facial massage as well. So about once, maybe twice a week when I'm lucky, I'll actually carve out some time to do my facial massage and I actually use the Kunza wand and the Ayurveda products that come with it. So if you're just doing this at home with your fingers, a few general concepts to remember is that you wanna use upward strokes. So we constantly have gravity pulling down on our face. So when we can move upward with our fingers through the spatial massage, that can be very beneficial. You also wanna think about circular motions, which can be really, really nice around the forehead and on the temples. And realistically, I think when we are doing this kind of facial massage and we start to kind of find areas where it feels a little tense, 
or it just feels extra, extra good to massage that certain place, then we should spend more time in that area. It's also important to work from the neck and pay attention to this upper chest region as well, because a lot of the lymphatic fluid drains from the face and actually comes down towards the clavicle. There's a little uh, lymphatic circulatory area behind the ear. So just remember for your facial massage that you really wanna address the neck and the upper chest as well as the face. We typically tend to carry a lot of tension around the jaw as well. So don't forget to also work a little bit around your jawline and pay attention to little areas of tension that you might discover around the jaw and the temples. The next thing I wanna mention is the products that we put onto our face. And for your facial massage, it is a good idea to use a little bit of oil so that you have a little bit more glide but I really encourage you to pay attention to the ingredients in your skincare products. And there are so many different products and different brands out there. This can feel a little bit overwhelming, but if you consider natural products and also just trying to avoid some of those more mainstream products that are out there, that will be really, really helpful. So one example of a harmful but all too common ingredient is actually petroleum. Now, petroleum products have been found in up to 22% of products. This was a study from the Environmental Working Group, and they found that 22% of products contained an unsafe amount of 1,4-dioxane. And basically, this is just a byproduct of petroleum. But the bottom line here is that among the conventional products they were looking at, they found a lot of them with unsafe levels of this certain chemical. When you're looking for petroleum on the label, you won't usually actually see the word petroleum, but you can look for things like mineral oil, paraffin wax, anything that starts with the word propyl, so propyl paraben, propyl alcohol, and also the word perfume or fragrance. So when you see that word perfume or fragrance, that's not a specific chemical. And there's actually a huge list of different chemicals that can just be listed as fragrance or perfume. But about 95% of those chemicals used to add fragrance to products are actually derived from petroleum. So myself personally, I'm looking for that mineral oil, um, the propyl that I mentioned, and also that fragrance and perfume, which you're gonna find in almost everything. So this kind of brings me to my next topic, which is opting for natural oils on the face. If you are trying to find an oil around the house you can use, I encourage you to opt for something organic, and you can experiment with different oils like coconut, jojoba oil, sesame oil, and just remember that because we have so much variation in our different skin types, that using an oil that someone else uses might not necessarily work for your skin. The key here is mainly just to avoid those highly processed conventional products. So I use these natural oils by the Ayurveda Experience. And I love this brand because they use the authentic formulations of these oils and incredible ingredients that are derived in a very natural and safe way. So the quality that you find in these products is so lovely. And then each one contains a really wide variety of different beneficial oils for the face. So when I do my Kunza wand massage, I like to use the Kunza oil. So this is an oil that is specifically formulated to be used with the Kunza wand. And just to tell you a little bit more about this, uh, Kunza, it means bronze. And bronze is a blend of copper and tin. And this type of metal has been around since the Bronze Age, which is pretty cool. So thousands of years they've been creating this metal. And then they started to realize the more they were using the bronze for plates, for glasses and things like this, they started to notice that you would be healthier when you were eating the products 
off of bronze or drinking out of a glass that was made of bronze. So over time, they actually begin to use that bronze or Kanza metal to create these amazing tools for massaging the body. And there are different sizes of Kanza wands that are contoured differently so that you can have one that's larger for use on the body, one that's a bit smaller for use on the face, and they even make one that's specifically designed for your feet. Bronze is also called the healing metal, and it has so many beneficial properties, it's even considered to be antiseptic and to help restore a healthy pH of the face. So there's a reason that this little wand has been used for thousands of years, and I will tell you when I use it on my face, it feels so nice. And I do feel like I have noticed a significant difference in the appearance of my face since I started including this little Kanza wand massage in my skincare routine. You won't recognize a lot of the ingredients that you see because they are these ancient formulations that come from Ayurvedic medicine. But what you won't see in the ingredients are any of those weird petroleum-based chemicals. You won't see anything unnatural. These products are clean and really high quality. So the way that they derive the oils also stays true to these authentic formulations. So the other oil that I really love to use is this Kasardi oil. And it does have a couple of ingredients that you might recognize. It contains rose. It also contains turmeric, which we know is one of these anti-inflammatory superfoods. It's also really, really great for your face. And it also contains saffron, which you may not be super familiar with, but this is one of those ancient formulations. Saffron, known as rose gold or autumn gold, has been used for thousands of years because it is so nourishing for the face. It has lots of B vitamins and these oils really kind of pride themselves on giving you a really healthy, natural glow to the skin. So not only a little bit of oiliness right after you put it on, but the ingredients in the oils really do help your skin to glow. And as a holistic health coach, I really firmly believe that the nutrients we put onto our skin are just as important as the nutrients that we put into our bodies. So I love knowing that I'm using something that's incredibly high quality and nutrient dense on my skin. The last oil that I wanted to show you is from this little duo. And actually the second oil from the duo is still on my bedside table. I forgot to bring it today. Um, but this is really nice. This one just gives you two different oils to choose from, so you can kind of alternate. The aromas are so lovely. You might actually find that you prefer one when you're trying to energize and maybe another blend on days that you're trying to be more relaxed and sleepy. And again, because there's just so much differences between each person and each type of skin, that there's a lot of variation. And sometimes you may even find that you need to use a different facial oil during the summer months than you do during the winter months, because everything is changing, including our skin. I also love using these oils before I put my makeup on. It actually feels like my makeup goes on more smoothly and it kind of functions as a primer to protect your skin a little bit from the makeup that you're putting on. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I really hope that some of these tips have been helpful for you. And again, please chime in down in the comments to let me know if you have a specific skin issue that you'd like me to address, or if you have a question about a skin product that maybe you've been using or you're considering using. I always love hearing from you guys, and I want to thank the Ayurveda Experience for sending me these amazing items. I love them so much. I hope you will try them out if you are looking for a way to just rejuvenate your skin. I hope you will join me in the very next video and have a really beautiful day till then. Thanks. Many of our subscribers don't see our videos. Make sure that you click the notification bell. And if you haven't already, follow us on social media for tips, tutorials, giveaways, and daily inspiration.
Thank you.